Welcome back. This is the last lecture, or at least the first part of the last lecture uh, for Unit 10. We are um, at the very end of uh, Art Appreciation. I'll probably have a couple of slide lectures um, to go where I will just be kind of reviewing some of the, the study guide material and some of the images from the study guide material, but uh, this will be the last actual content lecture. And so for Unit 10, we talked about high modernism, um, kind of going all the way up to the 40s, uh, really, um, and talked about artists like um, uh, Matisse and Picasso and Braque and uh, Mondrian and Malevich, and, um, but also um, some others like uh, Oscar uh, um, yeah, uh, and of course Duchamp, and um, and then on top of that we had a lecture on graphic design. I want to say I'm sorry about the sound quality on the lecture on graphic design. That was recorded at my office at work, and uh, for whatever reason, it didn't go quite as well as at home. And so the last lecture is on just the overall topic of design. This is both a chance for me to kind of recap some of the things we have learned about design all the way through the course, and also to talk about design as a concept, as an idea separate um, from its reality. And um, so there's uh, some major points I want to make about this lecture and, um, and major points about what I'm going to make in the lecture. Number one thing I want to say about this lecture is that um, there are two contradictory points that I'm trying to make here. One is that design really is real. Uh, design is a real concrete thing that um, when you take a piece of paper and you put a dot on it or a circle, you put a shape on it, the minute you add another thing like a border or another shape, that that changes the first decision. Uh, that that just happens, that the placement of things, the arrangement of things matters. Um, but at the same time, um, I want to emphasize the idea that design is, is cultural. It is a um, culturally constructed artifice, um, and it's different for different periods of time and different for different cultures. So um, we'll talk about those two contradictory ideas, um, and then that will lead also to a discussion about uh, the Bauhaus and the invention of the 20th century idea of design and that will lead to a discussion about um, perceptual psychology and the gestalt psychology movement and then that will bring us back to talking about some of the design principles that we haven't talked a lot about throughout the rest of this class. Okay, so let's uh, start, which is here's a painting that you've seen many times before, only different. Um, this is Malevich's black square, red square, only missing the black square. There's the black square, and there it is without. And the point I'm trying to make here is that the red square is not the same when it's a red square that's pretty much in an open field. If I had all the time in the world in Photoshop, I would have tried to um, make the texture go across so that it really did feel like it was completely a red square in an open field. In that open field, the red square feels like it has more potential, it has more lift, it could go further, it is unconstrained. With the black square, it's all about the presence of the black square, it is all about the restraint um, being placed on it. And so the red square is different. We see it um, as a different kind of actor with the black square than without. And so that's one of my first points, which is that design is real. But my second point is, is that design has not always been thought of the same way. Let's skip a couple of slides for a second and go to this slide. We've been thinking about design all the way through the course. And recently we've been thinking a lot about composition. And when we first started thinking about composition and design, we really started with the Baroque. And I think the contrast between the bar way the Baroque thought about um, composition versus the way the modernists thought about design can give you a good sense of how these things are constructed by their cultures and are a reflection of their culture. 
So they thought about many of the same things, right? Like that dynamics is not really that different from rhythm and movement, but they are very different ways of thinking about the same thing. You know, they thought about proportion. Modernists tend to think about scale. Um, we, a modernist might think about value. The Baroque artist would have referred to it as light and shadow. Um, modernists are very much put a high um, value on unity uh, whereas in the Baroque they primarily thought about contrast and they thought about contrast as a way of creating unity even though they didn't use the word unity that much. I think the biggest thing to think about is just the overall um, different way that they thought about the endeavor of thinking about composition or design. In the modernist period it was viewed as a scientific endeavor, an experimental endeavor where it was about break you know dividing things up breaking things down to their smallest parts whereas in the baroque it was much more thought of as part of a craft um, part of a tradition and where it was about doing all of the things together and so if we think about modernist ideas of design um, and once again this brings me back to the Bauhaus the Bauhaus was one of a number of movements and schools that occurred in the early 20th century um, that was about the idea that um, studio art, fine art, and craft, and industrial design, um, all of these things were really part of the same idea. They were all art and that they therefore should all have at their fundamental core the same basic elements, the same basic principles should be working in them all together. And so you had these art schools, like the Bauhaus, where graphic designers and furniture makers and um, industrial designers who designed teapots, let's say, um, and architects and painters were all teaching together, living together, working together, learning, being students together. Um, and this was part of this effort, and they were all moving towards this idea of finding kind of a very unified scientific curriculum for studying design and teaching design. And what's interesting also is that the basic Bauhaus design curriculum is very similar to the, um, the structure of art curriculum that we still follow today. You know, basic fundamental courses in design before students do anything else. Before a student can take a graphic design one course, they have to take a design one course, which is just about the fundamental units of design. Um, and here's an example of a Bauhaus teapot which is absolutely gorgeous. So, and here's um, an example of um, some graphic design, not from the Bauhaus period, but from the Swiss school period, uh, which was highly influenced by the design ideas of the Bauhaus. And so here's a piece, I, two pieces I picked as a contrast to think about um, different ways of thinking about design, right? Oh wait, go back for a second. If we think about this Baroque to modernist conception. Here's a very um, a very kind of obvious contrast between a Baroque way of thinking about composing and organizing a composition versus a modernist way of thinking about design. In modernist way of thinking about design is about trying to find the essence of things, trying to simplify, trying to reduce. In the Baroque it's about trying to pull all these things together um, but trying to unify things through contrast, like especially the contrast of light, the movement of light. Um, and so that's probably a good place for us to end part one. I'll get to part two 